Foundations. Now, it is extremely important that when you become a Christian, that you are now a disciple and you have to learn the theology. It's really, really important that we learn sound doctrine and to avoid all false doctrine. Foundations, understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. The Bible uses amazing imagery to describe the relationship between our Messiah and ourselves. One of the most striking is that of the Good Shepherd and his sheep. And we'll kick off this uh, program by reading a passage that talks about the shepherd and his sheep. And that's Psalm 100. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It's he who's made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. That is the most beautiful psalm. And yet sometimes when I read things like that where he says, you're a sheep, you kind of <laughs> think, is that a compliment? Do you know how dumb sheep are? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you've yeah, ever been on a farm with sheep, they're dumb and they're a bit smelly too. <laughs> they certainly are and they get themselves with burrs in their, I was going to say fur, they don't have fur, they have wool. Mm. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the picture that we have of a shepherd and his sheep from the Bible um, is that it's very, very loving. And I want to say at the outset, because we're going to talk a little bit more, as we, we often tend to do about the difference between a Greek mindset and the Hebrew mindset, is that in in, in our Western culture, which is very heavily influenced by um, the Greek philosophical intellectual mindset, the relationship between a farmer and a sheep in our society is not very personal. Mm as compared to the relationship between a shepherd and his sheep in an Eastern mindset. Okay, so again, we've got this um, this conflict between how we think here in the West and uh, the concept of a shepherd and sheep from uh, the East. Now, it is extremely important that when you become a Christian that you are now a disciple and you have to learn the theology. It's really, really important that we learn sound doctrine. If it wasn't the case, there wouldn't be so many admonitions in Scripture to be Mm. um, understanding of sound biblical doctrine and to avoid all false doctrine. That's absolutely true without question. But it's actually a lot more than just a mental exercise. And we've mentioned that before as well. And and in our society, we kind of think that if you get the highest grades and you remember the most information, mm. you are the smartest and the most mature. But that actually doesn't that actually doesn't equate in real life. I guess that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom in some respects, isn't it? Knowledge oh, is just knowing all the data, yeah. but wisdom is knowing how to actually apply that and understand you know, how it works in our life. Uh, absolutely. Look, you could know everything about a software program, but if you've actually never used it, well, you know, mm. it doesn't actually mean much. And the, the thing is, is that we tend to think if you've got the highest grades and the highest marks, you've got the best memory, therefore you're the most mature. That's absolutely not true either. Mm. So therefore, in our in our church environment, our Christian environment, without maturity, lots of knowledge, lots of information, but without maturity, and, and you said wisdom, which is probably more a, a better way of describing maturity, um, without that wisdom, you end up with power plays, you end up with a lot of politics, you end up with climbing the corporate ladder at church when we're supposed to be serving from the bottom. (laughs) You know, so knowledge and having high grades when it comes to what we understand about our faith does not mean maturity. And it doesn't make you a better disciple. It doesn't. And, and, this, and, of course, we're talking about not just a transfer of information. We're talking about living a mature, wise Christian life. And now, it's no accident that the Bible uses shepherding to describe the relationship between God and his people. And it's actually a really beautiful metaphor of God's discipleship because in, in many, many countries around the world, and, and ours as well, sheep are kept in fenced-in pastures. And they they've got a parameter around them, so they can't get away. They've got uh, water troughs, and they've got grass. And then you leave them alone. That's it. You you go and check on them every now and again. You shear them at the right time of year, but other than that, they're on their own. 
That is absolutely not the way it is in the Middle East. Um, and and I just wanted to um, point out once that I was actually driving down. I was with my husband. We were driving out in the country. We were actually going for Michael's, uh, our son's graduation from um, uh, army training. And we're going past this uh, a sheep property. And there was a sheep with its head stuck through the fence. It was literally stuck. Oh, wow. You know those those fences where they're like all sort of squares, but they're crossed over each other, so mm-hmm. they're little squares? Well, this silly thing had gone and put its head right through this little tiny <laughs> square. Could not get his head out. And I wanted to rescue this poor thing. The closer I got, the more frantic it got, and I thought it's going to choke itself. So I we drove up to the farmhouse and found the farmer and said, please, you, you're gonna, you've got a sheep. He's going to strangle himself. I wanted to rescue yeah. her. So the, the sharp farmer then had to go and rescue them. But that wouldn't actually happen in the Middle East. The only time sheep are actually penned is at night time or maybe in, in the winter if it's particularly cold and snowing. Otherwise, the shepherd is with the sheep all the time. They don't have that chance. Yeah. The, the shepherd is there to protect them at all costs all the time. And so um, we, I can remember um, when we've been in Israel, I went to watch it, see how they look at this massive, great big um, olive orchard and somebody had built these massive pillars that would have been as tall as a building and on top of it there were olive trees. It was a piece of artwork. <laughs> but while I was there taking photos of all this stuff, the shepherd comes up with his sheep and his goats and, and his little sheep dog and all the rest of it. They're just wandering around. I've, I've been at the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, right in the heart of Jerusalem, with the Kidron Valley in front of me and all the traffic in this city stops while a shepherd goes across the road <laughs> with his sheep. Wow. I've got photos of it. So this is the way it is in the Middle East. And I once heard of this lady. Her name is Judith Fain. She's a PhD. And she goes to Israel uh, several times a year. And she was watching some shepherds come together. There were these three, three shepherds. They came together with all their sheep. They stood together having a chat for a while and all the sheep all just intermingled with Mm. each other. She's thinking, how are they going to separate their sheep? So after a while, the conversation ended and the guys started talking, calling to their sheep. And the sheep just separated from each other and walked off and followed their shepherds. They were so familiar with their shepherd because they spend all their time with their yeah. shepherd, so they recognize their voice. That's a perfect example because obviously Jesus said that, my sheep know my voice, but there's an example of how that actually works yeah. because oftentimes in the West the farmer's on a motorbike or you know, not uh, in that sort of interacting and actually intimacy with the sheep. Well, herein lies the crux of this particular message that we're talking about, and that is because we have our Western mindset, we tend to not think of the relationship between a shepherd and his sheep. Or we wouldn't call him a shepherd even. We say the farmer and his sheep. And I want to make sure very clearly here that I don't want to in any way demean the ro- uh, farmers and their sheep. Usually our, our sheep farms are monstrous. How could they mm. spend every waking moment with every sheep? Not possible. I'm not trying to de- demean that. Mm. Um, or disparage that, what I am saying is that from the biblical narrative with an Eastern mindset, the shepherd would literally put his life on the line for his sheep. Mm. He would, even at night time, if they were out in the fields and they had a little small pen, the shepherd would actually lay across the little entryway of the, the sheep pen. But he was with them all day. And if he was, you know, in the middle of the night or in the day, if they got injured or something, he'd put oil on them, olive oil on them to soothe their where they've been injured. You know, if they were getting fly blown, he would clean them off. If there was, you know, um, mites in their wool or you know, an animal was coming to attack them, he would be there to protect them. So we're talking about a very personal hmm. approach. There's um, a little a, a biblical garden in Israel we like to go to. It's called Neot Kedumi. And it's basically every leaf, branch and shrub is a Bible study and it's fantastic. (laughs) But once we were there and there was all these sheep and our on-site guide said to us, oh, we've got a group of Israeli police coming today. We're going to be walking them through the principles of a shepherd to help them in their role as police in society. So it's really fascinating that when you're talking about shepherding, And our relationship with our shepherd, it's a personal relationship. There's nothing corporate or emotionally distant from it. Fascinating. Well, we're going to continue to look at this in the next program, understanding what it means for us to be sheep on Foundations. 
This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations.